Honey, I shrunk the Polaroid. Hi, I'm Gordon from Camera Labs, and this is the Polaroid Go, the world's smallest analog instant camera, and quite possibly the cutest camera I've ever used. Launched in April 2021, it costs $99 or £109 for the camera alone, and uses brand new Polaroid Go instant film that costs around $20 or pounds for a pack of 16 mini square photos, and that works out about a dollar or a pound 25 a print. The camera itself is essentially a shrunken version of the Polaroid Now, seen here on the right in its latest Keith Haring edition at Zoing Image in Brighton. Check it out if you're in town. I love what Polaroid is doing with design, whether paying homage to the rainbow stripes of the one-step land from the late 70s that inspired the Instagram logo, or celebrating artists like Haring. These are cameras I really want in my collection. There may be smaller instant cameras that employ digital sensors and tiny printers, but the Polaroid Go is the smallest to use a fully analog process, basically a smaller version of the Polaroid Now. Viewed from the front, it looks tiny compared to Fujifilm's Instax Mini 11 on the right, although the Polaroid is deeper, and when you lie the Mini 11 next to it, the difference isn't so dramatic. But the Go remains smaller overall, and I love the styling. Both models may be completely automatic with no override on exposure, but the Go is better featured than the Mini 11 with a double exposure mode, the chance to disable the flash, and a self-timer too, albeit no tripod thread. There's even a digital display on the back that tells you how many shots are remaining. Here I've loaded a new cartridge so the camera's reporting 8 photos, while the dot indicates that the flash will fire. Pushing the flash button on top toggles the flash off and on, although it will reset to on after each photo. Double clicking the button activates the double exposure mode, while pushing and holding sets the self timer. Now Fujifilm does have these options on some Instax models, but it reserves it for the more expensive models. In another step up from the cheapest Instax cameras that are generally powered with AA batteries, Polaroid has equipped the Go with a built-in rechargeable lithium-ion battery that's good for around 15 packs of film per charge and is charged over a micro USB port on the side. Like other instant cameras, you can pose with an optical viewfinder at the back and while there's no markings for parallax, I found it reasonably accurate. Turn the camera around for selfies and you'll see Polaroid has cunningly used a semi-reflective coating on the viewfinder, allowing it to double up as a surprisingly large and effective selfie mirror. Meanwhile in the middle is the lens, equivalent to 34mm for semi-wide shots with the camera automatically choosing from two apertures and a range of shutter speeds to adjust the exposure. No, unlike the Polaroid now, the lens is not autofocus and there's no separate macro mode either, so you'll have to trust the depth of field is sufficient and not get too close. Polaroid continues the cute theme by supplying the Go with a simple and colourful quick start guide and a gorgeous set of stickers which your family, if it's anything like mine, will fight over. Ok, now for the film which comes in cartridges containing 8 prints and they're typically sold in twin packs. Like other modern instant systems, the paper contains the chemicals that are needed to develop the picture, so everything you need is in there. Due to the size of the camera, the cartridges are loaded from the underside through a simple door that's reminiscent of Instax cameras. The first thing to emerge from the camera after loading a new film is the safety sheet that can be disposed of. Once you're good to go, a firm push of the bright red shutter release button fires the camera with the paper emerging immediately afterwards, hidden behind a retractable blind to protect it from light. You should now wait for at least 5 seconds before flicking the blind away back into the camera. At this point, the print should be placed face down or in a dark place for development to complete, which takes around 10 to 15 minutes. I generally place them inside the empty film box in a bag to shield them from light or rough handling that can damage the development. During this time, they're not as quick or robust as the Instax process. Once developed, you'll see the prints share a similar muted style to vintage Polaroids, softer and less contrasty than Fujifilm's Instax process, but attractive in a different way. With the paper measuring 2.1 inches wide, they're the smallest of the current instant formats, almost one quarter the size of iType Polaroids, and roughly the same width as a Fujifilm Instax mini print, seen here on the right, but shorter with a square picture shape. Here's a bunch of shots I took around Brighton with the Polaroid Go, starting with some outdoor landscapes on a sunny day. Now there's a slight magenta tone to them and what looks like some development issues due to my slightly rough handling of these first ones before I learned how careful you have to be, but I actually like the way they've turned out. 
For comparison, here's some previous shots I took with an Instax Mini on a different day, showing their higher contrast, but equally their inability to handle very bright conditions as well as the Polaroid has. So I'm relieved to see the Polaroid go not overexposing, or at least not as badly under similar conditions. Next for some selfies, all taken with a flash from arm's length, and here I felt they all looked a bit dim from the go, but equally you might like this style. For comparison, here's a few Instax mini shots taken under similar conditions, where everything looks turned up, brightness, contrast, detail, saturation, but which style do you prefer? Now while there's no dedicated macro mode on the Polaroid Go, you can still get reasonably close to your subjects. The coffee mug and guitars here were taken with the flash, and the fruit and the lamps without, and as before there's a couple of Instax minis for comparison. Finally, here's some more outdoor shots with the Polaroid Go, where I've tried hard to find some really bright and vibrant colours, and I think these have become my favourite pictures that I took with the camera. Sure, they remain more muted than the Instax process, but there's a very different style and quality to them that remains very appealing. And that, after all, is the joy of film and instant processes, that you're getting a result that can look dramatically different to modern cameras and even digital filters. While the Polaroid Go camera may cost roughly the same as a full-size Polaroid now, there's simply no denying the charm of this little device. And while the prints are obviously downsized, they also work out at roughly half the price of full-size iType prints. Now Instax Mini is cheaper still, with cameras starting at around two-thirds the price of the Polaroid Go, and film costing around 70 cents or pence a shot. Instax Mini prints are also taller, as well as being quicker and more robust at the development stage. But the Polaroid Go camera is better featured than a Mini 9 or 11, and once you match its features in the Instax range, the body price does become similar. So while the Polaroid film does remain more expensive, I feel the choice really boils down to which camera and process you prefer. A close arrival in price and print shape is Fujifilm's larger Instax square format, with the SQ1 camera here costing roughly the same as the Go, and the prints working out at a similar price too, sometimes even a bit cheaper for the Instax square when bought in bulk. Now I personally really like the Instax square format, but again it's a case of comparing the style of the cameras and the style of the process itself. In the end, it's a personal choice, but I can tell you that everyone who saw the Go just loved the look of it, and the cute factor is simply off the charts. I loved looking at it as much as I enjoyed using it, and I'll definitely add one to my collection. Polaroid is a small operation, but I think they're doing a fantastic job. I'd love to hear what you think, and if you're into instant cameras, do check out my other reviews, and I'd love it if you subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.